All right, we are back with yet another Starbase summary. Took a little bit of a break there because, well, Ship 36 also took a little bit of a break. That's okay. The tag here says uh, the hot staging ring is being moved. It's because it's not going to be needed anytime soon. If you've been living under a rock somewhere, uh, you uh, might not know that over at the Massey's test site, Ship 36, which was the ship that was supposed to be on the next flight of Starship, is not a ship anymore. It is a bunch of wreckage on the ground at Massey's being cleaned up. We'll see that later in the video. But uh, that is a thing. Not slowing SpaceX down over here at Tower 2, though. We see them continuing to do work on Tower 2. But here, we're going to zoom in over at Massey's, and uh, some debris cleanup is happening. You can see a crane moving around out there. It did take uh, quite a while for them to safe that area. There were burning bits of methane for quite some times after that anomaly. But over the course of this, we're going to have a little bit of uh, shots from a couple different angles so you can see what's going on at Massey's. Here's a shot up from the road. This is a little bit of a distant shot from Caesar. Just uh, showing, you know, if you didn't really know what to look for, you'd be like, oh, what? It's some tanks. It's fine. Do you see that pile of rubble there above the right tank? Yeah. That's where the ship in the, trans the the static fire stand used to be. Over in another part of Massey's, there's that B-18.1 test tank. At this range, air quotes, appears to be undamaged, but uh, who knows what the status of that thing is. It may have taken some hits or some heat damage or thermal cycling or something like that, but we'll see what happens. There's Rio West, that mixed-use development they've been working on over... Uh, up the highway between the production site and Massey's. And one big thing people didn't really understand is how far away Massey's is from the production site. Like, here's the production site. Behind the camera, it's about four miles from the production site back past the camera all the way back to Massey's. So the explosion at Massey's is not really causing a big impact directly to the production site. There's the Starbase sign and a crane grazing for things to pick up in the background. But uh, even though there's no specific damage at the production site or the launch site, the launch site's even further away from Massey's, still, Massey's was the only place that they could test ships, right? You can't static fire a ship on the launch stands anymore. The, the clamps at the launch man are for boosters. And you can't put a ship on top of a booster and static fire it. The, the holes in the, yeah, the holes in the hot ring are not big enough. So uh, the destruction of that test infrastructure at Massey's is the biggest thing, even though there's no direct impact to the buildings at the production site. It's the parking garage on the left-hand side, and it says uh, Mega Bay 1 Alley. I mean, it's sort of the area behind the Mega Bay, between the Mega Bay and the parking lot there. At some point, this is probably all becoming Giga Bay. So are they going to leave a little alley there or not, or is this just going to be one big massive building? And if you want to get to the other side, you have to go through it or around it. The building back there, labeled Raptor Nest, this is where the Raptor engines are stored. Let's just see from the outside. Just a door and a gray building. Got a little bit of uh, United Rentals free promotion here. Skid steer scraping some stuff up. Wow. Neat. I guess we're going to get some skid steer scraping and tamping action. Let's, let's run it over with the tracks. Let's scrape it back with the bucket. Let's smack it with the bucket a few times. Spin around a little bit. What, are we going to dump some more? Okay, we're going to drive while dumping and running over it. Excellent combo move there. I want one. I don't think I need one, but I want one. Slightly bigger piece of equipment. Uh, carrying, it looks like a light generator stand there in the background. This is one of those big, massive forklift it's not really a telehandler. It doesn't tell a very much. It handles. It just doesn't telescope. But that is one of those big loaders that you see moving things around, uh, like those temporary walls that go in, pallets and crates of stuff, and apparently light stands. Going to time lapse some more skid steer action here. Hey, look, it's a coyote. Is he hunting for food? He's looking. Is he going to pounce? Oh, he turned his head sideways even. What do you got? Is it a crab? What'd you find, coyote boy? Or girl, I don't know. I... Yeah? What is it? Is Ship 36 stuck down the well? 
<laughs> I mean, oh, no way! It totally pounced! <laughs> I was kidding! I didn't think it was actually going to pounce like that, and it did the quintessential dog about to pounce on something pounce, like wolf pouncing on the snow rabbit. I don't know if it caught anything. It totally did the pounce, though. That's why I don't watch these videos in advance, because then I would be like, and coming up next, watch the coyote pounce. That was a delightful pouncing surprise. This is a lot of coyote footage. <laughs> Not much going on at Starbase. We're just going to sign Caesar up for a nature documentary like the, the Wildlife of Starbase by Caesar. There's a long shot over to the launch site. The towers are still there. Pad 2B. Oh gosh, I don't know. On the left and uh, the old launch mount on the right. You can see the difference in the two launch mounts there. The more SLS NASA style launch mount here at Pad 2 and the uh, original dev style Stargate on its side uh, launch mount over there at Pad 1. But work continues, even though the ship had its massive anomaly. They continue to work on all the piping and plumbing and detailed bits to bring this pad into service. Still likely months away from being able to actually put a rocket on this. But uh, I think by the end of the summer, coming into early fall, we're going to start seeing a full stack. And the real question is, are we going to ever see a double stack with the old style OLM? and the new style launch mount at Starbase at the same time. I'm curious. I, what do y'all think? Do y'all think we'll ever see anything like that, or uh, do you think we'll never actually get two starships stacked at the same time? There's some welding and heating happening. We're going to be walking around the inside of the Cylon Resurrection structure here. It's really getting filled out. Like, look at all the plumbing and everything that they've put in there. The previous uh, shots we've seen have been sort of empty. But now it's pretty filled out. Here's the draw works. You can see the massive steel cable spools there that pick the chopsticks up and down the tower. There's that grounding cable again. I think somebody in the comments told me, yeah, 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 that looks like a grounding cable. Uh, not official confirmation, but if at least one YouTube comment agrees with you, you feel pretty good. Here's the chopsticks, the shorty chopsticks over at pad two. Again, they really do look funny. Like, especially if you see them in person, you're like, that. After seeing so much of Pad 1's chopsticks, here they're doing the old katana to your face thing. Like they, they point it at your face so you can't tell where it is or how long it is. Uh, so it doesn't, it's not obvious how long they are when you're looking at them directly like this. But if you get a shot from the side, they look larger. Silver at Pad 1 again, the ship quick disconnect arm. No ship there right now, clearly. The cable's slapping around in the breeze. And then, you know, the crazy that you see the little ladders and stuff in there. Like somebody has to climb up that ladder when the ship is there. I've se we've seen people go up there and do things with the quick disconnect plates. And they have that little permanent ladder installed. There's that weather station and a whole bunch of cameras. I think every time we look at that, there's more cameras up there. Those sealed tubes with the uh, glass in front of them. There's a little bit of enhance on those. But those are just cameras pointing every which direction up and down. And, well, basically up and down. Not really any left and right because then you wouldn't see the rocket. There's the booster QD down on the bottom. Some scaffolding has grown on the outside of the QD, but we've been seeing a, quite a bit of work around there, and it really is looking worse for wear. Look at the rust. Like, that whole thing is just brown. It's just made of rust. But uh, we will see when they get another booster over there. They're going to need to figure out what ship is coming and what they're going to do. Big tricks is going to be how do they test this ship. We know they've got ships, but uh, here is the last ship. Jeez. There's the tri that's the static fire stand, the crab stand, and then the wreckage of the ship. Now, here we were way across the river. Remember there were uh there was the hazard warning, so not approaching anything. Like, look, if a rocket ever blows up or debris washes ashore, don't go up next to it. If you're in a boat, don't get close to it. If you're on the beach, don't go up and kick a tank or anything like that. I think the warning talked about a, a COPV they hadn't located, a super high pressure tank that obviously would have sustained some damage and you're out on the river with your little boat and you hit it with the propeller of your boat and this tank still has pressure in it or whatever i don't know that it would but you never know uh, just don't approach those areas but here jack's zoomed way in staying way clear of that side of the river where the debris was noticed but here look at that just like the twisted metal structure and the remains of the i mean it's 
it is still the test stand. I mean, it's still the static fire stand. That's mostly there. The ship is just skeletal remains strewn everywhere, though. Like, these guys are picking up individual pieces. Look at that. Look how Jack uh, bumped the contrast there so you could really see the remains of the static fire of the crab stand there. But in any event, that is what has been happening over there at Massey's. Look at another pass. Look at the damage on the tanks there. Like, yeah, okay, that's cosmetic. That just looks bad. But those tanks with that fireball were exposed to heat. Did something fall on it? Did they get dented? Certainly there are lines that have problems. Um, surprised to see those tanks not completely missing. But if I'm not mistaken, I think those are uh, water tanks right there next to the launch pad. And they store the consumables or the flammable parts, the methane, further away. But it's not slowing down. They're going to keep doing work over there. We'll keep watching what is happening that has been a Starbase summary. Appreciate y'all getting caught up here. Imagine you already saw the explosion video, but if, but if you haven't, click back over and see thir Ship 36 explode, and we will see you nerds later. Thanks for watching.